Hi, I'm Ezra Koyman. I lead the Millimeter Wave project in the corporate R&D. And this year we're showcasing our 28 gigahertz prototype. We were here last year as well, and we've, we showcased a more clinical type of, type of test with uh, antennas on open uh, open space, top mobility, uh, mostly line of sight. This year we're trying to address robustness in a more vehicular type of environment, in vehicle, handheld, with the effects of body blockage, hand blockage, foliage, just to see if millimeter wave in a mobile access type of uh, situation will, will work. And we're, this is a standalone system, so we're not advocating that millimeter wave is completely robust. It's an honest representation of millimeter wave, but paired with sub six gigahertz, it works perfectly well for data offloading in an opportunistic sense. But to showcase the, the system, we, we do mobility in a, in a consumer van with someone holding the handset inside of a passenger seat with all the effects of the passenger blocking and the out the in penetration into the vehicle, as well as a walled office. So this is our New Jersey office. Uh, it's walled, recorded in the daytime, all the OT data is in the daytime, with people in the office standing up, walking around, all the body effects. Just to showcase that in a typical office environment, in cubicles, closed offices, conference rooms of people, that we actually do get uh, a link and we actually get a good performance as well, a viable performance. So overall with the office and the vehicle mobility, we show that yes indeed, millimeter wave in a handheld type of situation in vehicle is feasible with some robustness issues, which are easily offset offset with the combination with sub six. Okay, great. Okay. So Excellent. I can go into the demo, but sure. <laughs> so you want to go into the demo itself? It's okay. It's, it's somewhat more of a. I can do it, but it's somewhat sure. more of a technical thing. Okay. So the demo will start first in a vehicular mobility type of setup, where even though our prototype is large, the baseband is large, the antennas are housed in a UE handset type of module, so something we can actually hold. We can place it next in the passenger seat. Someone can actually lock it, and, and we can see as close as we can get to the actual handset without actually building a handset. We have uh, a setup with two G Note Bs outside and two, two G Note Bs inside to showcase both the, the effect of uh, handover and robustness gains with two G Note Bs to, to blockage. So it's called a G Node B now instead of E Node B. Is yes, that the new it's name? Yes, it's Okay, now. it's got it. So we start with the outdoor mobility. We'll show a UE that goes in a van down this road, down a highway first, up to 30 miles per hour, down this tree line road. We'll look at the effects of foliage loss, uh, foliage and uh, penetration loss, and then we'll show handover. After that, we'll go to a parking lot situation, which is. Not as fast in terms of uh, in terms of speed, but it's actually a very uh, dynamic environment because of all the blockage from the cars, the lamppost, and then the change of rotation with all the passengers blocking the phone. So here we start at 30 miles per hour in the van. The Juno P tracking the UE. We'll see that the beam starts tracking the UE, and the, the shaded purple is actually the candid beam, so the candid shows up before we actually do the actual oh, switch. Okay. Yep. As we go down this tree line road, you see that because of the foliage loss, once in a while, we actually get a reflection from the lamp post. You'll yeah, see it again right here. Yeah. You see it right oh, now. Oh, there it is. Wow. That's actually a better link than going through the foliage. Huh. And it happens quickly enough that we can actually maintain that. Once we're past the field of view of uh, Geno B1, we do a handover to Geno B2. And that's a more traditional sense of handover because it's the cell edge. And we do a, a handover right in the cell edge. Here we'll, we show that uh, the cell boundary is not really well defined in uh, millimeter wave. Mm -hmm. It's not at the cell boundary that you hand over, but as you see, we're really close to Geno B1 here, but we hand over to Geno B2. Ah, and that's okay. because the person in the passenger seat holding the phone, once the car turns, blocks Geno B1. I see. And then we have to hand over to somewhere else. So there's all these micro spots induced by either blockage or by the environment of lampposts, cars, that induces this, this handle. This is an indoor office, it's a walled office, non-line inside operation, penetration through a wall, in some cases reflections. This we start with mobility, 
it's the only time we're actually not holding it, we're pushing because it's heavy. We can't, really <laughs> yeah. we can't walk around with it. Uh, and this is the only line of sight link. But it's typical use cases in an office. Will it work in a cubicle? Will it work in a uh, walled office? Will it work in a conference room with people? All the OT data is recorded with actual testing so this is none of this is uh, in a clinical environment so she's closing the door there so one she's of the things to, is so it penetrates through this wall i see so how is that possible because the understanding of millimeter wave is that they don't penetrate walls at all so, so how is it actually is, it's not an issue especially u.s type of office okay where the walls are sheetrock okay the sheetrock is only actually a couple of db loss okay got so it you can easily penetrate two three four of these and you know, still be having a link march of that okay here, this is something interesting. If this is a robustness to, to blockage, so this person blocks that link, then we do a handover to another GNOB. So multiple GNOBs in the environment provides you robustness to, to blockage, whether it's self-induced or... With session continuity? So this is a five layer. Okay, five layer study. handover. Okay, so then you have to do a, you know, a higher layer handover, so you have to do that in an efficient manner, of course. Got it. So it has right. implications on network design, do I have to do a, some kind of cloud or cloud band type of deployment, do I have to do caching at each of those so I can handle them quickly, or do I maybe wait a little bit in case my link comes back and actually go back, drop down the sub-6 right. temporarily before I come back so I don't force a handover. Yeah. So with dual connectivity, of course, then with sub-6? Yes, dual connectivity. Okay, or with gigabit LTE, right? Exactly, yeah. or, or with gigabit LTE, and that's something that Qualcomm is pushing. Rather than standalone, I have not standalone with uh, LTE or uh, 5G and sub 6. Okay, great. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.